You've probably heard that turmeric supplements can help with the side effects of breast cancer treatment, like inflammation and joint pain. You might even have been told it could cure cancer. But what if I said that for half of you watching this, turmeric could increase your risk of a breast cancer recurrence? I'm Dr. Liz O'Riordan, a breast surgeon who's had breast cancer, and I know what it's like to live with the fear of recurrence, and I've experienced those painful side effects of treatment myself. In this video, I'll break down what turmeric can and can't do, when it might be safe to take, and most importantly, who should never take it. Because while it's a popular supplement, it could interfere with your cancer treatment and put your health at serious risk. This is information you need to know. So let's start with the most important fact. Is it safe for you to take turmeric supplements? Now, turmeric might seem like the perfect natural remedy. It's been used in Eastern medicine for centuries and it's packed with anti-inflammatory properties. But here's the problem. It doesn't just affect inflammation. It affects how your body deals with certain drugs. Taking turmeric with certain cancer treatments can be like adding an unknown ingredient to a carefully balanced recipe. Your doctor has designed your treatment plan like a precise dish, each element measured to work together. But throwing in something untested, like a mystery spice, doesn't just change the flavour, it can ruin the entire dish, making it ineffective or even dangerous. And here's how. Turmeric stops blood from clotting. If you're heading into surgery, this increases your risk of bleeding. It makes common chemotherapy drugs less effective. Doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide and paclitaxel don't work as well when mixed with turmeric. But worst of all, it stops tamoxifen working. If you're taking tamoxifen, this is critical. Think of tamoxifen like a seed. On its own, it just sits there. But when it's in the right soil, with the right water and sunlight, it transforms into something powerful. An enzyme in your liver turns it into endoxifen, the compound that actually stops estrogen-sensitive breast cancer cells growing. But here's the problem. Turmeric competes with tamoxifen for the same enzyme. If your body is busy breaking down turmeric, it can't activate tamoxifen, and without realizing it, you're increasing your risk of a breast cancer recurrence. So what does this mean? If you're taking turmeric supplements right now, you must stop at least two weeks before any surgery. If you're having chemotherapy, you need to ask your oncologist if it's safe. And if you're taking tamoxifen, never take them again. And if you found this video helpful so far, remember to hit like and subscribe to my channel. But if you're not taking tamoxifen chemotherapy or heading into surgery, could turmeric actually help? Before we look at the benefits, let's find out what turmeric actually is. It's a bright orange spice from the ginger family and it's the key ingredient in curry powder. It's been used for centuries in traditional medicine for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Now the active ingredient in turmeric is called curcumin and only two to five percent of the turmeric root contains it. That's the thing with the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. It's also a weak phytoestrogen and this means at high doses it can mimic the effects of estrogen in your body. Now, you might have heard the rumours that turmeric can actually cure cancer because of its antioxidant properties. There are London clinics charging £400 for a turmeric drip with the claim it can fight several types of cancer. And another company says that anyone with a personal or family history of cancer should take turmeric supplements to prevent and treat it. It sounds great, right? Except there's no strong evidence that turmeric can cure cancer in humans. This is Nutribolics. Whilst in a lab setting, high doses of curcumin can slow down cancer cell growth. But that doesn't mean swallowing turmeric has the same effect. Your body processes turmeric very differently to cancer cells in a petri dish. And in some cases, turmeric could be making your breast cancer worse, not better. However, if you're not on tamoxifen, you might be considering turmeric for another reason, joint pain. And as someone who's been on letrozole, I completely understand why. Oestrogen is a natural lubricant, and without it, our joints can feel stiff and sore. And some people say turmeric helps. But how much should you take? Now, I did a quick survey of 10 different supplement companies, and they all recommended different doses. Some were powders, some were capsules. It's confusing, and it doesn't end there. 
Are curcumin pills better than turmeric ones? And should you get them with added ingredients like piperine? And what is piperine anyway? And why is it all so complicated? Surely there's data to tell us what dose we should all be taking, like paracetamol, for example. The problem is that turmeric by itself only has a small amount of the active ingredient curcumin. Taking turmeric for the active ingredient curcumin is like trying to get your daily protein from lettuce. Sure, there's a tiny bit in there, but you'd have to eat an entire fridge full just to get enough. And even if you did manage to down a jar full of turmeric powder, most of it would never make it into your bloodstream because it's just not absorbed by your body. Think of curcumin on its own like a text message with no signal. It's there, but it's not getting delivered. And that's why some supplement companies add piperine from black pepper or fats to increase absorption, kind of like a Wi-Fi booster for that text message. But most of that curcumin is degraded to inactive compounds in your liver and bowel and excreted in your urine. Very little of the active ingredient enters your bloodstream. You are literally flushing money down the toilet. And for an extra kicker, piperine also competes with tamoxifen for that enzyme, stopping tamoxifen from working. So what is the correct dose of turmeric? I've trawled through the literature and there is no official recommended dose for cancer patients. Studies range from 1 gram to 8 grams per day. Now, the World Health Organization's recommended daily amount of turmeric is less than 0.2 grams per day as a cooking spice, which is far lower than what supplement companies recommend. A common dose of curcumin seems to be 400 to 600 milligrams three times a day, which is equivalent to 15 grams of turmeric powder. Are there side effects? Well, studies have shown that taking two to three grams a day for two to three months appears to be safe, as long as there are no contraindications. But there isn't any data on long-term use. And as most of that high dose ends up down the toilet, you're better off just having the low dose and saving your money. Now, you also need to remember that food supplements like turmeric are not subject to the same quality and safety standards as conventional medicines like paracetamol. They could contain yellow talcum powder and still be sold as turmeric. Now, this may shock you, but several supplements sold on Amazon don't actually contain the ingredient on the label, so always buy them from a reputable source. So what should you do to help your joint pain if you don't want to take turmeric? Instead of spending your money on a supplement, you could buy fruits with natural antioxidants instead, like blueberries. Make sure there are plenty of healthy fats in your diet too, like oily fish or avocados. And exercise can also help with stiff joints, and I know it's the last thing you want to do, but it keeps them supple and can stop them getting worse. And always check with your cancer team before you take a supplement. There could be hidden dangers that aren't on the back of the bottle and they could cost you your life. And if you want to learn more about why breast cancer treatments give you joint pain, watch this video where I'll break down the science.